It's an especially warm fall day. All of them patches have almost made it to school. Are you excited, Patches? It's just so nice to be back in school. Yes, I have fond memories of this institution. The ghosts, the stabbing, the blood. I can almost smell it. Uh, actually, Coco managed to clean up a bunch of the school yesterday. So, no gore. Huh. Guess I'll have to make my own then. <laughs> You're so funny, Patches. You're too much of a good boy to go and do something like that. What makes you say that? Well, I don't know. Because you're my friend, and I w want you to know I believe in you. The two arrive at the front steps of Hachiko High. It's as though the massacre never happened. Olive, took you long enough. Meet Mitt and Whisk. Hello, dog. My name's Olive. Olive. Angel, uh, you've got a haircut? And got in a car accident? Angel, Whisk is talking to you. Coco shoots Patches a desperate look. Oh, right. Hi, man. I'm not Mitt. I'm Whisk. Oh, sorry. You cats all look the same. Coco shoots Patches another look. This time less desperate and more pissed off. I mean, us cats look the same. Um. <laughs> uh, right oh, you're a funny one, Angel. Yup, very funny, Angel. Anyway, Mitt, Whisk, let's head to the home ec room for some baking. I'm excited for you guys to meet Brownie. She's a very nice dog. Let's hope so. Sounds good to me. Whisk shoots Patches a wink. Patches is nothing short of disgusted. That reminds Angel of me? This might be the worst crime he's committed against me yet. Ah, well, well, I thought Whisk was nice. Olive and Patches head into the school's foyer where they find Coco waiting. Ah, Patches, can you try a little harder to be Angel for today? You gave me no indication that I should be prepared to do that. Well, I'm giving you it now! Ah, Olive, you're going to have to let Angel know that he's Patches today. We don't want anyone asking questions about how a cat and a dog had a fight, so they tore their souls out of their own bodies and squished them. Okay, Tadoki! The bell rings, signaling the start of the first period. Let's go! Olive turns around to give Patches a quick hug. B bye Patches! Have fun, make a lot of friends, and don't run away, uh, okay? I'd be really sad if you got lost. Oh, and here's your s schedule. They run off into the school of Coco, but not before Coco gives Patches the evil eye. There'll be an assembly at the end of the day. That's where Mitt will heal all the dogs, so long as no one messes up. Hmm. I'd better figure out how to get this collar off me before then. This banner was painted in a rush, but from afar, it looks pretty cute. I bet Olive was behind this. There are a bunch of maps, presumably for cats who are unfamiliar with Hachiko High. The pamphlet features a colorful map and Patch's unique schedule. There's a note written on the back of the pamphlet. We're taking attendance for everything. If I hear that you're skipping, I will literally kill you. Coco. Home economics it is. The trash and recycling have been recently taken out. These lockers are all locked. As they tend to be. Mine is further in the school, but... It should contain something useful. This is where Hachiko High Star athletes and academics are put on display. A few awards belong to Sparky and a few to a dog named Luna. Ugh, overachievers. I suppose those fools didn't have time to clean the rest of the school and opted for a simpler solution. 
Patches attempts to cross the barrier. He's shocked as soon as he touches the yellow tape. As soon as I get this collar off, I'm going to choke Coco with it. Friendship bake... free? Damn it, Olive. Learn how to write properly. Welcome to Home Ec! Oh, hey, Pat! I mean, hey, Angel! So Coco decided you'd take Home Ec first, huh? Brownie tries to smile. I'm not gonna pretend to be friends with you. You disgust me. Oh, thank dog. You disgust me too. Great. Now that's out of the way. I'll be sitting quietly in the corner, plotting for your demise until the bell rings. Patches turns around and begins walking away. Right into a cat. Angel. So you followed me to home EC class, eh? Everywhere I turn, there's a moron. All right, everyone, shut up! It's time we start class. Here are the rules. We're going to learn how to bake. We're going to have fun. And we're going to pair up cats with dogs. Brownie looks excited while the rest of the class groans audibly. Shut! Go partner up and we'll start. Some students are frozen with indecision. Others begin pairing up begrudgingly. A fight looks like it's about to break loose. No, oh, I really wanted to be your partner, Angel. Well, I guess I'll have to go torment some poor dog. Feel free to help me. Coco! Cats and dogs only, huh? I guess there is no other dogs here that you're super good close pals with. Maybe we could be partners. What? Brownie, look at this mess! Coco gestures to the class. Cats are chatting with cats and dogs with dogs. It's a pretty mundane scene. They're like animals on the edge of pandemonium. I need to focus on supervising. You're going to be partners with Pat. I mean Angel. Somebody's got to keep an eye on him. What? Wait, 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 dude. Anything but that. Look, he's got that collar on. He couldn't hurt anyone. And I bet he knows that if he messes up today, he'll rot away, just like the rest of the zombies. Actually, I welcome this sweet release of death. See, Brownie? This kid's got nothing to lose. That's why you're his partner. Now sit. Class is starting. Coco walks everyone through the recipe brand on the chalkboard at the front of the room. The recipe is easily customizable. It's up to the pears to collaborate on the flavor. When the cakes are baked, everyone is to report to Coco to be great on friendship. Well, this is easy. We're both dogs, right? Bacon it is! Who said I liked bacon? Oh, right. I forgot you're the posh little prince who needs everything his way, or he'll up and shank someone. Yes, exactly. <laughs> Try it, buddy. I can't wait to see you shock yourself into a coma with that kinky little collar. I'll just sit right here until you bring back the ingredients for a bacon cake. Got it? And when did we agree that I would be the one baking this cake? When you broke my flippin' leg! I didn't break your leg. Sparky did. Ginger did! Exactly. I didn't break your leg. The point is, my leg wouldn't be broken if it weren't for you. Now bring me the ingredients! Oh, I'll bring it all right. G good Brownie's nervous, but it's not like Patches can do much with that collar on. Hi, Angel. Whiskers told me a lot about you. Any friend of my brother's is a friend of mine. Let me know if you need anything. Hmm. As you know, my sister, Coco, is rather uptight. She put a curse on this collar to keep me from disobeying her. I'm not too good with magic. Perhaps you could dispel it. 
Uh, that's awfully suspicious. Whatever the reason she put that collar on you, the answer is no. Whisk and I are trying to prove that cats are superior to dogs, and it wouldn't be very becoming of us to cheat by bringing magic into the classroom. That is the stupidest thing I've ever heard. If cats really are superior, they should be using all the power and magic at their disposal to completely eradicate dogs. And in doing so, perhaps help me dispel this collar. Hmm. I like your conviction. Um, but the answer is still no. Once I've made up my mind, nothing anyone says will change it. Good luck with your collar, though. Well, actually... Do you have any sort of secret ingredient that might kill a dog approximately the size of a small corgi? I'm going to murder my partner. Um, can't blame you. Whisk's been telling me that his partner hasn't been pulling their weight either. That being said, I unfortunately have no access to chocolate or other legal substances. If I wanted to, though... I could kill every dog here in an instant. Then why don't you? Sometimes it's nice to wait for the perfect moment. Huh. You and I have more in common than we thought. Just sit tight and enjoy the day. You're a cat, so there's nothing to worry about. I wonder how difficult it'll be to get my collar off and poison brownie. The Tony instructions keep shifting between friendly and excited to loud, colorful language. Brownie and Coco should work on their collaboration skills. What's up, Angel? Need to help with anything? Well... Coco's making me wear this magic collar. It keeps me from getting in any sort of trouble, you know. The naughty sort. It'd be really nice to get it off, though. I need a strong and capable magic cat to help me dispose. Perhaps you could help me out? Strong and capable? <laughs> Whiskers is incredibly flustered. I would absolutely help. But I don't think it'd be fine with Mitt. We're trying to prove cats are better than dogs here, and it wouldn't be fair if we used magic. So no magic in the classroom. Figures you'd say that. Well, I better get baking. Hmm. You wouldn't have any rat poison, garlic, or chocolate, would you? Uh, no? Why would you ask? I <laughs> just wanted to pull a little prank. Nothing too dire. Oh, <laughs> you're so cute and devious. I personally stay away from that kind of stuff. Good luck on your hunt, though. It's a Banny the Rabbit plush. Oh, it's a Hello Puppy doll. Not that I care about that trash. Patches recognizes this dog. Hey, you. Hello. Ugh. What a moronic zombie have any chocolate. Doug's eyes dart around nervously. Ch chocolate? So you want the delicious rush of it, huh? A few bites won't hurt a big dog like me, but I think even a crumb could kill someone your size. Well, no worries. It's for a dear friend of mine. Alrighty then. I'll give you some if you bake my cake for me. Do you hate cats so much that you can't just bear the thought of baking a cake with one? Nah, I'm just lazy as heck. Fair. The ingredients are on the counter with that cat named Whiskers. Ugh, oh, anything but him. Have fun! 
Doug carelessly munches on chocolate. How's the literature club, Doug? Doing plenty of reading, I presume? Or have you been using your exposed brain as an excuse to slack in club activities? Doug snaps out of his fake stupor. How do you know about the literature club? And my name? I guessed. Whoa! That's a neat trick! How'd you guess? I mean, what school doesn't have a literature club? And what club doesn't have a vice president? And a smart-looking dog like yourself must be a member of such a club. Huh. I guess that all checks out. So, is that brain-dead pug over there your partner? Ugh, yeah. I sent him out to get the ingredients, but all he's doing is just standing there, staring at the wall. I'd reprimand him, but I can't even bear being within talking distance. He stinks so bad. Whisk grumbles. As much as I'd hate to ask, could I... be your partner instead? Huh? You do that? I mean, that sounds great. But what about your other partner? The annoying corgi. There's a certain ingredient I'd like to get before I start working on our cake. Baking with you will be a nice intermission of sorts. Hmm. Alrighty then. I'll be waiting here for the ingredients. Maybe we can make a salmon cake, since we're both cats. Ah, uh, salmon. I mean, that sounds great. Patches climbs up on the kitchen counter in order to reach the ingredients higher up. He's got flour, salt, and sugar for Doug and Wiss's cake. All he needs is the wet ingredients now. Patches rummages through the fridge and retrieves milk, eggs, butter, and salmon for Doug and Wiss's cake. Hey, Angel. Got the stuff? Here you go. Great. Whisk whisk together the ingredients. The batter is poured into a pan and is ready to bake. Well, that went smoothly. Thanks so much for helping me out, Angel. It's so much nicer working with another cat than a dog. Dogs honestly scare the hell out of me. Yeah, they suck, don't they? It would be a shame if you were to somehow swindled into having a dog as a partner, hmm? Absolutely. I was kind of against this whole communal school thing. It just seems like a lost cause. To let you in on a little secret, though, Mitt and I are kind of just in this to see the dogs make total fools of themselves one last time before they all rot to death. Seeing Coco scrambling to save them all is a bit of a bonus, too. Ah, uh, you're an asshole for such stupid reasons. But I guess I'll support you with anything that results in more bloodshed. <laughs> Thanks. Let's hope by the end of the day we're the last ones standing. Patches bakes Doug and Mrs. Cake. Oh, Angel, did you finish baking the cake? Here you go. Thanks so much. You know what, Angel? You've been acting pretty strange today, but I kinda like it. If you ever want to come over after school and bake or hang out or whatever, I wouldn't be opposed. Uh-huh. I'll keep that in mind. Do I smell salmon? It's all done. And with your partner. Huh? You give it to my partner? Darn. I wanted to have it all for myself. Oh well. At least you saved me some precious wall staring time. My payment? Here you go. Pleasure doing business with you. Tell your friend not to eat it in all one place. Patches rummages through the fridge and freeze milk, eggs, butter, and bacon for brownie's cake. Now to get the dry ingredients. Patches roots around the bottom cabinet but only finds tea towels, pots, pans, and non-toxic dish soap. Patches climbs up on the kitchen counter in order to reach the ingredients higher up. He's got flour, salt, and sugar for brownies cake.
Here's the trash for your filthy bacon cake. Great! Brownie mixes out the batter and pours it into the cake pan. The cake is ready to be baked. Now go bake it, slave! Do not call me that! You're right. I should wait till you're on the chain again. Then it'll be really funny. You're into some pretty weird stuff. Huh? No! It was a joke about how you're under our control this time. Pervert. Patches waltzes away before Brownie can finish. I'll poison her some other day. Patches bakes the bacon cake. I'll consider washing my paws once there's blood on them. Patches hands Brownie the finished cake. She puts a little flour on top for decoration. Like it? I found it outside. The cake is ruined. This cake looks awesome. <laughs> hey Patches, thanks for doing the heavy lifting. It'd be really hard to do this on a broken leg. Or with some random dog-hating cat for a partner. Glad us dogs can stick together, huh? I honestly can't even be bothered to tell the difference between cats and dogs. I guess it makes sense, since you and Angel were. Ah ha ha. I mean, it's nice that you don't care who's a dog and who's a cat. Some cats are actually so cool. Ronnie looks longingly in Coco. Ugh. Stop feeling things around me. Huh? You have a thing for Coco, right? Shit! What? No! Don't be so loud. Who knows how the class would react if they found out a dog liked a cat? Or how Coco would react. You wouldn't. I, I, I don't even like her. I swear. She's uh, too loud and full of herself. You're loud and full of yourself. Ah, I know! We're perfect for each other, okay? Patches, I know we're not exactly pals, but you know what it's like to like a cat, right? I just don't want to, like, scare her away. And she's been so stressed out about making sure everything goes well. I can't be bothering with her dumb feelings. So please don't tell anyone. Patches shrugs. Thanks for listening to me, Vent. Say, can you grab Coco so she can grate our cake? Okie dokie. I mean, okay. Guess Olive's rubbing off on him. On the desk are some grading sheets. Looks like Coco's marking cakes based on their level of availability, friendship, and lack of hair. Brownie stares at Coco, and then back at the cake, and then back at Coco. Are you here to bother me, or is your cake actually done? Have you talked to Brownie much? Huh? I talked to her at the start of class. You were there! Yes, but I mean... About something other than your precious mission to heal the dogs. What? What is this about? Did she say something? Is something wrong? Is dissent spreading amongst the class? Oh, I'm certain dissent is brewing somewhere. But I'm talking about the big crush that Brownie has on you. Brownie has a what? The entire class, including Brownie, looks in Coco and Patches' direction. Patches? Oopsie. Brownie jumps on Patches! You asshole! I told you not to tell anyone! Heck, <laughs> <laughs> stop! Stop! D tell what? He d didn't tell me anything. It's too late. Brownie is trying to choke Patches out. Well, this isn't looking too good. I guess cats and dogs really can't get along. Want us to get rid of your dog problem, Coco? Ah, enough! Coco uses her spoon to pry Brownie's paws off, off Patches' neck. You! Outside! Now! Yeah, Brownie? Out! Not her! You! What? I wasn't the one who assaulted another student! I don't care! It's only first period, and you're already wrecking havoc! 
What do you think Mitt and Riskel think? They're going to see dogs as bloodthirsty pests that need to be exterminated! Again, I was not the one who assaulted another student. And seeing dogs as pests to be exterminated? Don't you find it a little ironic that you're lecturing everyone on this? No! I've changed, and I'm trying to make up for everything by any means necessary! Coco raised her wand. Maybe you should do the same. <laughs> what? You'll kill me? That really screams, I'm a good cat now, and I'll never hurt anyone ever again! I wonder what Olive would think if they saw you right now. Face it, you're a murderer just like me. That will never change. Huh? You sure are getting shocked into silence a lot today. Huh. I... I... I just want to be a good cat. Ah! Oh, I suppose it wouldn't be very productive of me to criminalize you for something you want to move on from, so... S sorry. What? Did you just try and make me feel better? In a terribly half-assed, but still kind of nice way? No! I was just saying what came to mind. As I do. As a lot of people do. <sighs> I seriously just want to move on. But I'm such an asshole to myself. It makes it so hard to change my habits. Is that relatable to you at all? No. Why would it be? Patches, you need to move on from being a total blood-hungry asshole. But you can't do that unless we allow you to. Or unless someone believes in you. Coco waves her wand. Patch's collar feels a little lighter. <laughs> you realize I can go on a bloody rampage now, right? Guess I'll just have to trust that you won't. Thanks for at least trying to make me feel better, Patches. Coco pats Patches on the head. It's infuriating. Welp, time to go back to classes and do some damage control. Brownie's standing on the teacher's desk, juggling eggs. What the f- Coco? Brownie fumbles the eggs. Ugh. The class laughs, especially the cats. This is hard when I'm on a crutch, okay? Brownie? What are you doing? I- I'm trying to show off what an adorably non-lethal dog I am. Careful, Angel. She might try and maul you to death again. I mean, it's not like he deserved it or something. Someone needs to take you behind a shed. Shut up, Whiskers! You... Nope, shut up! Sit down! You have nothing useful to say. You're just wasting everyone's time! And Brownie! <laughs> Thanks for trying, at least. It's more than this fool is doing. <laughs> Thanks. Now everyone, go back to baking. Come to me when your cake is done and ready to be grated. Hey Patches, is your cake done? It sure is. Awesome, let's see it. Oh, <laughs> hey Coco. Hey, uh, how'd the baking go? <laughs> it went well. Patches didn't manage to stab me even once, so that's a bonus. Is it awful that that's our standard for good behavior? You realize I can hear everything you say, right? Anyway, your cake looks super cute, especially with the flower on top. Wait, did you steal these flowers from my yard? Yeah, I figured you'd like them more that way. Uh, I guess I can't argue with that logic. You get a passing grade. Whoop, whoop! Wanna try some? I'm alright, you go ahead. Yes! I've been waiting for this all morning! Tastes like sweet, sweet bacon. Mm, it's so good. I can't believe you and Patches managed to make something edible at all. Brownie continues stuffing her face. 
Wow, it must be really good. Maybe I'll try some too. Coco tastes the cake. Wow, this is way better than raw meat. Try some patches. Well, patches eat some cake. Coco and Brownie are super happy. The bell rings, marking the end of first period. I guess that's that. I'll see you at lunch. Hope your pal enjoyed that treat. Have fun literature, Patches. Have fun wasting away at the hands of time. So, uh, Coco, I'm really sorry about everything. I know you're already so stressed out. I just didn't think Patches would go and tell you. That dweeb. I care about you a lot. You're super cool and smart and loud. But even you're allowed to ask for help sometimes. So let me know if you need anything. Duh. Sure, I guess your antics would help everyone get adjusted to being around dogs. Heck yeah! <laughs>